Afternoon guys, back again, ripping up the Essex countryside. So yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more about this bike because the last video I made the battery, I finished the battery, um, my crazy ass pack. Oh, oh, what happened there? Oh dear, we have a situation. It's all right, just the XT60 plug come out. Nothing serious. Yeah, last video I finished the battery. Whoa! And the battery has basically been performing like an absolute dream. I'm not even joking, like it is just another level. Another level. The amount of power this thing puts out. Um, last night I did a small run but I didn't film it. And that was um, going basically about 12, that went about 12 or 13 miles. Yeah, basically I got back home and it was just, just slightly warm. God, it's sliding around a bit. I do like it though. Yeah, so what I'm finding is that <laughs> with all this power now, is that whereas before I used to pin the throttle and basically just be like, uh, you know, it's not quite quick enough. Look at that crazy um yeah so I'd, I'd be pinning the foot everywhere on the standard buffang setup but now literally i've got too much power so much power that i'm almost like i'm almost like having to be very careful it's like you've got to treat it with respect it's very windy around here apologies if the audio is bad yeah you've got to kind of treat it with respect like kind of like my other bike you know, I'd be very, very careful on where I put the throttle on just because, you know, things could really go wrong very, very quickly. Uh, as they probably will in a minute. <laughs> so, right, first little problem here. So we've hit some sort of like phase, phase overcurrent or something. So I'm going to be really straight up with you guys and tell you exactly all the problems and all the little issues that you will face if you do this sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to shut down. This is a good thing about having the BMS plug on here because you can effectively shut down um, the BMS which will restart the controller okay so that's shut down so we're off to a really good start aren't we guys um, <laughs> so I'm going to fire it back up again that should come up yeah so obviously with all of this it's not perfect because the first problem you've got is that you've got a pedal to get started you can start it from a straight up without um because i haven't got hall sensors connected in this motor it's not possible to do it i'm looking into a solution for that but right now i'm running completely sensorless as you might remember in the original um the original videos where i kind of set out with all this i'm running it i'm still running it sensorless so i mean it's, it's fantastic for what it does but it just means the startup talk is just not quite there and it's and it has to almost like fight a little bit to get started so oh look at that the, the way that power comes in is almost dangerous because it's like a like a power band which kind of comes in oh, it's very very windy guys i'm sorry but the audio is bad again um so i keep losing my train of thought i'm trying to concentrate where i'm going I'm not flat out at the moment. I'm running 2,000 watts, doing about 25 mile an hour. Well, the back, the back then, flipping out. Right, this is very, very muddy. I think I might have to, um, might have to abandon this this direction and go the other way. Go back the other side. It's flipping. Well, right. So there, look. This is the this is the thing you get. So put a bit of throttle on. It does it does start, but it will judder a little bit. So can you hear that? I don't know if you could hear that. I'm getting a spin up now. Oh, lovely. Look at my track as well. You can see I'm putting down some power to that track. Oh my god, I'm gonna end up in a bush. I'm actually gonna end up in a bush. I better slow down. <laughs> Jeepers. So yeah, I mean, I'm getting back, after like a, yesterday I think it was like 
15 miles or something. Um, that was mainly on road and on, on like a trail. Come back, battery's just basically lukewarm, not even, not even bothered. So it's really amazing. Um, you know, nothing's being pushed. The motor as well, the temperature was like 40 degrees, but by the time I'd got off the bike and taken my crash helmet off and everything, it had gone down to like 30, around 30 degrees. So madness, isn't it? But yeah, we're set, so full throttle then, just pulling away, you know, it's go down to like 79 volts. So you're getting like hardly any voltage drop at all across this, these cells. I mean, if you want to build a battery, build them out of these cells, guys. Or, you know, you know, there's got obviously other options and things like that. But um, if you want to do a really high performance battery, make them out of these cells. Because I'll tell you what, it is it's just next level. The way it picks up speed, this thing, is just... Because it don't weigh anything. That's the thing. That does not weigh anything. And you're flying about, and you've got to stick a leg out because you can't... It's just going to... Just wants to pull you off like a full throttle going out it oh look at that so i did notice i said at the end of the uh the last video i was saying that i had a problem with i could hear creaking coming from the back turns out it was the chain so the chain had basically i don't know it, it got a little bit dry so i had to um i just lubed it up a bit that's all, all i needed to do oh god feet on these pedals they don't want to come off the pedals that's the problem it's got quite a lot of grip this is the ultimate dirt bike though I'll tell you what ultimate dirt bike you've got to be very careful <laughs> the way it puts that power down the sound of it as well is just next level oh <clears throat> Oh, I just love it. I love the feeling of it. Where it just plants, it puts you... I'm going to be covered, absolutely covered. Just look down and everything is just completely and utterly saturated. Hopefully this battery thing's waterproof. Yeah, so what else can I say? Um, talking about gearing and stuff. You know, you're trying to find the best gear for the job. I mean, the one I'm in at the moment is probably, oh, I don't know what it is. I think it's, pro it's probably like a 28, 26 or 28 tooth on the back. Obviously I've got the 48, 42 tooth on the front. And that, although it goes against what would normally kind of be on a, you know, like a dirt bike, you'd have a very small tooth on the front and a big one on the back. But I've been looking into how to maybe put like a pit bike type setup on it that pull it that pulls like an absolute flipping train oh dear i think we've um lost the connector again yeah so this is something i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to look at i wasn't having this problem before but since i've been going a bit mad on this run i'm gonna turn off the bms so it don't spark it's tight as well i don't know how that's coming out so yeah, it's just little little niggles like this really, just things like that you've got to just kind of get your head around. But I mean, it's not anything crazy. So we're at 35, 35 degrees. This is a private road. Lovely, isn't it? Lovely. Change my mind, I'm going to go somewhere else. So I've used two and a half amp power so far. Out of the nine we've got available, I got back yesterday on about eight amp power and it was still pulling hard. So I think it's, I think it's fine for, the way it's holding its voltage, I would expect it to deliver close to nine. 
definitely because the way it's holding its voltage is just another kind of level really as i've said before so i'm going back up this way oh, this is absolutely this is sodden over here isn't it crikey oh good job i didn't clean it wasn't it water and these Bafang motors well the thing is with um with a mid drive normally the controller is in the um is in the actual motor itself so if you get water in the motor you're screwed but because i haven't got the controller in the actual motor my controller's waterproof to an extent uh, it won't be if that plug keeps coming out but um yeah because it's pretty much all sealed and the only thing in the motor is the windings which are you know varnish impregnated probably anyway there's not really any other wires in there no hall sensors or anything so if water does get in there it may corrode some bearings or things like that but it's not gonna it's not gonna cause major problems um i wouldn't have thought so you know that's that's another good advantage of having an external controller uh i did have someone message me actually asking me about this this setup saying so this is the hill climbing guys that actually no problem at all it's still climbing speed uphill and that's quite a steep one uh yeah somebody messaged me about the um about this m620 and said they wanted to do the same right now i wouldn't recommend it i mean the way i'm riding this is uh you know obviously it looks like a right blast and it, it really is but it's got quirks that's the thing it has got quirks but I'm, I'm kind of overcoming that by because I just want to ride it so much so you know the startup thing is an issue I'm looking into how to add some hall sensors in there to try and make it a bit more smoother um, my language sometimes is so a bit more smoother <laughs> uh, but you know it, it is what it is I mean you know these these things are all all a little bit DIY so you know that's part of the fun in my mind I'm going to just slip my front light on if you want a bright headlight that is going to make you bankrupt get that exposure max D it's another level look at that it's lighting that sign up right there so yeah I'm, I'm in I mean I'm in like as I say I'm still in that 28 2 sort of gear and to be honest with you it's topping out at 30 mile an hour in that gear but the acceleration is nuts so if i want to go fast i can just turn i can just go down the gears but as i've said in a few comments i was people were asking what the top speed was i was just saying well the top speed is whatever you want it to be because you can gear down you can just go through the gears and it'll do 50 mile an hour easy but to be honest i wouldn't trust that sort of speed on one of those tiny little um, tiny little gears anything below like a 17 tooth or something I wouldn't I wouldn't do it not with four kilowatts it's gonna shred that thing I mean if you ever taken if you, if you do bike stuff and you've taken those little gears off there there's nothing to them the big ones have because they've got like reinforced they're almost like on a spider so you know those those aren't gonna have a problem but the little ones nah you're not gonna not gonna do it be all right for a thousand watts I reckon up to probably that would be about your maximum so yeah that is the thing you, you kind of get around all the trails really quick and, you, <laughs> and then you're like oh I've done three and a half amp down where else am I going to go but <laughs> this thing is absolutely covered in mud though I mean it is pretty funny where are we going next let's go down here oh the way that spins the back wheel up is just so fun oh it's epic really is that power lead's going to come out in a minute i need to do something about that so fast well it feels fast it's only about 30 mile an hour but on this sort of terrain fantastic this looks like fun over here there's a, like a sort of like a trail oh can you feel that you wouldn't be able to feel it well the spin up 
Oh, we're slipping and sliding like an absolute. This is the first time I've experienced. Um, oh, some proper spin up because these tyres have got so, so much grip that there's only a limit. There's a limit to any a limit to any tyre. So these tyres I'm running are the Schwab Eddy currents, um, which are actually e-bike tyres. Somebody wrote a comment in the other day saying, um, oh, hanging off the back. Somebody wrote a comment saying, e-bike tyres, you know, what the hell? So you're saying the other tyres ain't any good? No, that's not exactly what I'm saying at all. I was basically saying, manufacturers have started making e-bike specific stuff and is it worth it who knows but what all i'm saying is these particular ones these um oh look at i'm i'm covered these particular ones are are insane <laughs> look at this oh my god well it's a good job i just i'm wearing nothing other than these um this bike gear because if i was wearing anything else under here be going in the house later and the Sarah would be like what the, what the hell at least I can just oh yeah the other thing I was gonna say today I am um... oh when that power band comes in you're gonna fall off you're gonna come off sliding around it's oh, such awesome fun I just hate getting muddy though that's the problem yeah basically <laughs> I got into the workshop earlier on and um it was like 40 degrees in there. I'm like, oh no, what have I done? I left um, a fan heater on in there and everything in there was like hot, which I thought, well, I need to take the bike out now because of course the battery would have been nicely, nicely um, warmed up, ready to go. So that's why I'm out. Oh, this is just, I love it. I flipping love this thing. It's unreal. Oh. I don't want to end up down there though. Right, so I'm going to flip back up here. I've had my fun down there. Motor's at 47 degrees. So around about 3,000 watts, we get a whack. We get an absolute whack of torque. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's flux freaking in or something, but it's something to do with the controller setup. I might talk to Justin from Grin about it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I might talk to him about it because, I don't know, all I do know is that power connector is going to come out in a minute. I've not had this problem before, so it must be to do with... No, it's alright, it's not too bad. I'm very, very chuffed to bits with this build, really am. It just keeps on giving. You need good brakes. I've got, um, if you haven't seen the other video, if you, if you just kind of like found this video, these videos and stuff, um, thanks for watching, but go and check out some of the others because it will give this a little more context to what, what I've been doing for the last, God knows how, what I'm trying to, I'm trying to heat this, um, trying to heat this motor up. Right, so here we go. That's V max in that gear, 32 mile an hour. But you see the speed that it gets there, is just on another plate. So if I drop down a couple here, I'm getting a, another whack of power and we're up to 35-ish. Now, I'm not gonna go any further because I just I just don't trust the uh, the drivetrain at this, at this moment in time, especially with all these cars coming the other way. I'm trying to be sensible, all right? Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. And then we're back in the other gear. And I mean, it's just lunges forward, guys. It lunges forward up this hill, lunges. I'm not mean, I don't mean it, it climbs the speed, climbs, it climbs a hill, I can't even talk. It's, it lunges up that hill, literally just then. And we're over halfway into the battery. Mental, absolutely mental. So 
sorry this is all over the place guys but I'm just gonna speed up and try and get ahead and go down here all right yeah sorry if I'm all over the place in this video I'm just talking and trying to ride but I'm trying to give you a little bit of a bit of information on how this thing's how it works I'd like to give a sir on a race you know I'd actually like to give a sir on 60 volt sir on a race a blast because this I'm telling you this will is, is going to be way lighter going to be way lighter I don't know whether to whether it would be better with a um, a big fork on the front though like a downhill fork I'm not sure where am I I don't know I don't know where I am I know there's a road there got a GPS there as well so I can actually find out where I am anyway see there you go love look at that sunset when I was saying about the the way this motor starts and it you, you do have a bit of a problem with it kind of um, you know the startup of it you know it's not that bad it's not that bad you can you can live with it um, but I do want to investigate hall sensors to try and you know smooth that out it would also mean that it would probably just flip me off the back right from the word go rather than having that power band where it comes in I think that power band might be where it, it flicks over to um, uh, what they call it um, uh, uh, closed loop so I think it that's where it flicks over to closed loop um, I don't know I don't know, might be able to improve it somehow, but I'm only using 250 watts now because I'm on the road, guys. So, 500 watt now. Yeah, but what's interesting is that, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but what's, what's interesting is um, the phase runner has got this, phase runner's the controller, the phase runner's got this feature where you can actually have a free wheel. So what it does is it actually turns the motor continuously. So when it when you get up to a certain speed, I'll see if I can show you. When you get up to a certain speed, you can configure all this as well. When you get up to a certain speed, you can basically take your hand off the throttle and then take your take your legs off the pedals. Can you hear and see? Maybe you'd be able to see. You'd be able to see. Oh, you'd be able to see that that front chain ring is going round and it's pulling pulling me along. Now that is that's a way of solving any startup jolt when you haven't got hall sensors. Oh, we're in a nice little quad bike there. So that's how that's sort of how they, they do it. They get that's how you get around not having um, hall sensors when you when you come off the throttle. Because otherwise, if you come off the throttle and then put it back on again, it'll probably jolt. It does do that slightly, but it's not it's not the end of the world. Anyway guys, that's it, that's all I've got, hopefully that was interesting, I will catch you in the next video, subscribe, like, do all the usual stuff, god it's living windy, I tell you, living windy, see you later guys.